with respect to, then uh, to post-colonial aesthetics uh, and post-colonial artists and so forth, the point that I'm making is that the aesthetics are precursors to the theory, that that uh, that uh, post-colonialism, uh, uh, post-colonial criticism, follows post-colonial aesthetic experimentation, and that when you look at the work of uh, African writers like Wally Shoyinka, uh, when you look at the work of uh, painters like Gordon Bennett, uh, uh, Aboriginal painter in Australia, or Arnaldo Roche, uh, Roche Revel in Puerto Rico, uh, that you're seeing uh, uh, a, um, a, a particular poignant use of aesthetics to say something, to contest something, to challenge received tradition, uh, to place within um, a very vigorous um, dialogue uh, received understood practices, norms, ways of approaching and understanding the world. Uh, out of this framework, then, uh, I'm arguing that post-colonial aesthetics, post-colonial artists are saying, as a first point, the separation of the third world from the first in aesthetics or art is illegitimate. That the tendency to, in canon versus multiculturalism debates, to see the third world as completely uh, cleaved or separated from the first, as representing some cultural aesthetic construct that is so uh, distinctive and a set of values and organization and so forth, that so distinctive from the first is illegitimate. The point being made that uh, these systems are in dialogue with each other. Uh, and that um, third world artists are, are really raising questions about identity, authority, freedom, and rights that are, that are working through the ground of particular received traditions uh, coming out of the West. Um, and that uh, one of these areas then is this very powerful critique of uh, classical realism, the realism that you find in the 19th century novel, that you find in the mannerist uh, paintings of the 17th century that stabilizes the self-sufficient subjects that is really sitting on top of a, a hierarchy of discourses. Uh, so that if we're uh, reading Jane Austen's Emma, it's Emma that gives us our moral anchor. Uh, we know where we are in terms of her understanding of, of, the, of the world. Um, and um, if we're looking at uh, Herman Melville's um, Moby Dick, a similar thing. Whenever Ahab appears on the deck, he is surrounded by a world that is bureaucratically organized. So you get the first mate, the second mate, the third mate, the first harpooner, the second harpooner, the third harpooner. They are arrayed around Ahab as the world is socially organized with respect to class, with respect to race, with respect to first world, third world, etc. cetera. Uh, that's uh, the point of contestation that, that then what you find often in the post-colonial uh, novel is an implosion of that subjectivity, the foregrounding of polyglot characters that seem to flash on the surface of the novel rather than uh, 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 consolidate uh, uh, over time. Uh, and therefore, the voice, the reasoning of a single position uh, is not necessarily privileged. Uh, what you have is the, uh, a plurality of points of view. Um, 
so these works are drawing, I'm arguing, on a wellspring uh, of a plurality of traditions and borrowing indiscriminately. They are engaged in hybridity or a kind of impurity. Uh, there's a whole literary tradition in the Caribbean known as mongrelism, which is this idea that uh, we are all in some way dynamically uh, connected, that even in the ethnicities of people that have evolved out of the Caribbean, that the links between the different ethnic houses are tremendously powerful, uh, and that these uh, ought to be uh, identified as strength rather than weaknesses. Um, and there is also the preoccupation with the fate of communities, with the fate of uh, the group over the self-sufficient subject. And I'll, I'll illustrate some of this as we go along when we look at some of the examples of uh, post-colonial aesthetics, some of the paintings and some of the novels and some of the music. Uh, and then I will uh, go on to talk somewhat about education.